Hey guys, it's Jordan here, and today I wanted to talk to you a bit about feminizing hormone therapy, specifically in the context of male to female transgender patients and undergoing medical transition. But before we get started, I do want to say happy Transgender Day of Visibility. So I just started this past Monday, March 28th, with my first dose of estrogen, as well as spironolactone, which is the testosterone blocking medication that I've been prescribed. And before I go on, I just want to make a disclaimer. Don't think that my breasts came from that dose of estrogen. These are prosthetics that I wear to help with my gender dysphoria. Um, so they are not my own actual body and did not come from three days of being on estrogen and testosterone blockers. So now that that's out of the way, I did want to explain a little bit more about these. So we'll start with the spironolactone, which I have here. It's um, a pill that I take twice a day, and my doctor decided to dose me at 100 milligrams twice daily. So I take it in the morning and I take it at night, and it can be taken with or without food. And one thing to keep in mind with this drug is that it also has the effect of being a potassium sparing diabetic or diuretic, sorry. Um, and so while it's a less common side effect, one thing that this drug can do is elevate your levels of potassium and that can be dangerous, which is why it's really important to stay with your follow-up appointments for blood work to make sure that all the levels in your body are doing okay with these medications because you're changing a lot here. So that's the spironolactone and we can talk now about the estrogen. So I decided to go with an injectable estrogen. So I've got a vial here and I have needles and syringes. There's a different needle to draw up from the vial versus the one for the injection. Um, and this is an oil-based medication and it's injected intramuscularly. So I do it right here in my thigh and I take it once a week and it's a two milligram dose once a week. So this is at a concentration of 10 milligrams per milliliter. So I drop 0 0.2 milliliters into my syringe and give myself the injection. And it just takes maybe a minute to do the whole process. And that's just having done it once. Super quick and easy. Um, there are various forms of which you can take for estrogen and one of the more common is oral medication, like a pill. And the reason that I decided to avoid oral medication is because when you take a medication orally, it's going to go through metabolism in the liver before it makes it to the rest of your systemic circulation. So that with estrogen actually causes the liver to produce more clotting factors. And this isn't inherently dangerous, but it can lead to an increase in the risk for heart attack as well as stroke because it can be more likely, not guaranteed, but more likely that you can form a blood clot due to the increase in clotting factors. So that's why I decided to avoid oral. And then at that point, the options presented to me were a patch for transdermal, which is worn all week long and you just put it on once a week and change it once a week um, and it can be worn to shower and everything but i decided that i was going to go with the injections because that way i didn't have to worry about just having a patch there that i had to get used to um, and i thought you know if i decide the injections are not the route for me i can always switch to a patch um, but the option that was not presented to me was also there are gels and those typically are rubbed on your thighs and I'm not sure about how often they're done but that is another version of, of giving yourself estrogen um, a, another example of a transdermal um, administration so in terms of the effects of hormone replacement therapy that one can expect to see I got this table, which I found to be really helpful from my doctor. Um, the only thing is I'm not sure if I can take it out of my visit summary. So I'm just going to tell you guys what it says. And hopefully that comes across easily enough. I can clarify anything later on if uh, 
people need me to. Hi, Belle. So anyway, um, some of the effects that one can see are decreased spontaneous erections. So waking up in the morning with an erection or simply getting one randomly, which happens sometimes uh, less so if you're past puberty. Um, that happens usually within one to six months of starting your hormone replacement therapy. And then breast growth occurs typically around three to six months, but the maximum effect happens somewhere between two and three years of having been on feminizing hormone replacement therapy. There's also going to be a decrease in testicular volume because a large volume of the testicles is sperm, which when there's less or close to no testosterone circulating in your system, then you're not going to be producing sperm nearly as much and your testicular volume will shrink because of that. So that happens within three to six months of starting the hormone replacement therapy. And again, the maximum effect also is around two to three years. Um, there's going to be a redistribution of the subcutaneous fat. So that's the fat right underneath your skin, but over the muscles. So typically males tend to gather fat more in the abdominal region. Um, that fat is going to tend to redistribute towards the hips and the butt. And there's also going to be some fat growth around the chest um, and in the pubic area as well. And that happens within one to six months, but the maximum effect can occur anywhere between two and five years. Um, there's also going to be a softening of the skin, which happens within the first one to six months. And there's no listed time to a maximum effect. I think that you'll just notice your skin is softer. Um, I'm not sure if I've been noticing my skin being softer or if it's facial hair growing a little bit less. Um, or at least a little less quickly. Whatever it is, I feel a little difference in my skin, but not much. Um, and then there's going to be decreased facial and body hair growth. Um, so it's not going to completely stop, but it will slow down, it will thin out. Um, this occurs somewhere between 6 and 12 months of being on the therapy, and the maximum effect happens within 3 to 5 years. So all that said, that's the main stuff that can be expected, and that's what's listed in my summary from a visit with a doctor. But there are also some anecdotal effects that people experience, such as emotional changes, um, as well as heightened sensation when we're talking about like touch. So that kind of gets the more science stuff out of the way. Um, and I guess we can talk a little bit about my own transition. Um, so I just started estrogen on Monday and it was a bit of a nightmare trying to get it. It was this roller coaster because I was in New York visiting my family and drove back to Detroit on March 23rd because I had a bunch of appointments to take care of on the 24th. I was doing some sperm cryopreservation at the fertility preservation department at University of Michigan. And then after that, I got some blood work done at the same site. And then I went to get a quick lesson on how to give myself injections. And I was expecting that the blood work results were going to take at least a couple of days, so I probably wouldn't be able to get my prescription until the following Monday, because this was a Thursday. So little did I know, I started getting all the results that same afternoon. And then I get a call saying that my prescription has been sent over to the CVS where I was going to go pick it up. So I waited a little while because normally I'll get a text to confirm that my prescription has been filled and I can come get it. I didn't get one of those, so I just assumed, okay, a couple hours have passed. I'll go and see if they filled the prescription. So I get there and the pharmacist tells me that my insurance is no longer accepted at CVS, something to do with them having lost a contract. And it said that it was fairly recent, so I was like, okay, and I called up my parents because it's their insurance and I'm still on it, thankfully. Um, 
and they told me they hadn't heard anything about that, but that was going to affect them picking up their own prescriptions. Um, and it wasn't until later a friend mentioned, you know, maybe this could be a case of discrimination going on here. And my first order of business was to find a different pharmacy that could fill my prescription for me that would accept the insurance. So I did at a Walgreens. Um, they made everything very easy. They just unfortunately had to order everything. So I went from thinking I was going to have to wait until Monday to, oh, I can get it today. And now back to having to wait until Monday. But um, as it turns out, I called the insurance company to verify what I'd been told by the pharmacist at CVS. And they told me that they still have a contract with CVS. They even looked into the specific location and informed me that, yes, they still have their contract with that specific CVS. So that kind of solidified it in my mind that this was most likely a case of discrimination. There was still a chance it could be an honest mistake, but I was getting frustrated at that point. So anyway, I went and I spoke with the pharmacy manager there, and she informed me that there had been another issue with a patient coming to pick up medications, uh, a female patient, as far as I'm aware, cisgender. So anyway, hopefully that report made it somewhere. I'm supposed to be getting a call from them at some point, and that hasn't happened yet, but it hasn't quite been a week, so I'm not too concerned. Eventually they'll call, um, I hope. But anyway, I was finally able to get my estrogen on Monday, as originally predicted, and it was really, really gratifying to be able to take it. Um, I thought I was going to be a little more hesitant giving myself the injection, but I kind of sat here for 15 seconds or so, and then I was just like, alright, we're just going to do it. And I just went ahead and gave myself the injection, and it was as easy as could be. Um, obviously we're here three days later. I haven't really noticed physical changes. I think maybe I've been waking up with a little less facial hair having grown back in the morning. Um, but I'm giving it like at least a full week before I take a photo to compare because I took a picture the other morning and um, I feel like it's less, but I'm not positive. So we'll see. That'll be a, an update in the next one. Um, but beyond that, there haven't really been any physical effects, but I have noticed that I've had some very vivid dreams. Um, I don't know that... I'm sorry, my cat's meowing over there. Val! <laughs> um, but I've had some really vivid dreams. I haven't really noticed any emotional effects, um, but I'm sure those will come as many an anecdote says they will so yeah it's only day three it's been officially 72 hours since i gave myself that first injection and i don't know what youtube's community guidelines are but if you guys are interested in seeing what that process looks like at least the preparation and the cleanup um i'm more than happy to post a video just let me know by liking this video also, I wanted to give a shout out to all of my new subscribers. I know I've gotten like some ridiculous number, like 59 new subscribers since I uploaded my first video coming out. And thank you guys so much for the support. You know, it really makes me feel great that I'm doing something important. I've had a lot of people reach out to me and say like, hey, we're really excited for these videos. So thank you everyone and I'll catch you next time. Bye.